This has been a historic week. The 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. But as well, the nomination of the first woman of color to be Vice President of the United States. Kamala Harris, in her acceptance speech, spoke of being on the shoulders of giants who would pave the way for this groundbreaking event. She spoke of Mary Church Terrell, Mary McLeod Bethune, Fannie Lou Hammer, Diane Nash, Constance Baker Motley, and Shirley Chisholm. When I read the Hebrew scriptures for today, I thought of another, one called Moses, Harriet Tubman, who was born in 1822. Slave on a plantation in Maryland, she escaped, but went back 13 times to free 70 slaves from captivity. She'd become a conductor in the Underground Railroad, and she was cl claimed the most prolific conductor of the Underground Railroad of anyone else. In the Civil War, she was a scout for the Union Army, and during that time, she was the first woman to lead an armed assault in the war. In the Kumbabi River Raid, more than 750 slaves were freed and were taken to ships for safety. Later on in her life, she worked with Susan B. Anthony on the women's suffrage movement. A white woman once asked Tubman whether she believed women ought to have the vote. And her reply was, I've suffered enough to believe it. In everything that she did, God was her guide. She said, taught me, t'was the Lord. I always told him, I trust to you. Don't know where to go or what to do, but I expect you to lead me. And he always did. I thought of the midwives in the letter to, uh, in the book of Exodus, of those unsung heroines who saved the children of Israel, who were, court, were commanded to kill every male child as they were given birth, and they engaged in acts of civil disobedience in acts of faith and acts of trust in God. And when the king called them back to say, how come you were not killing all of these children? They told Pharaoh, well, the Israelite women are much more rigorous than, than the, uh, much more vigorous than the, the Egyptian women, and they gave birth before we arrived. The more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and were strengthened so that the Egypt, Egyptians came to dread them. And we see here then the story of the birth of Moses, of being put in a, uh, a container of bulrushes and hidden in the Nile, and the story of him being found by Pharaoh's daughter and in essence being adopted and given back to his natural money to nurse him by his natural mother to nurse him until the time he was old enough to be in Pharaoh's court. Martin Luther King reminded us that the arc of moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Barack Obama said, change takes a long time, but it does happen. We have seen change recently in healthcare and don't ask, don't tell, in the creation of the Consumer Protection Financial Bureau. Some change occurs through individual advocacy, some through policy reform, some through lawsuit. Each of us who works for social change is part of the mosaic of all who work for justice. Together, we can accomplish multitudes. We stand on the shoulders of so many who have fought for civil rights, who have fought for justice before our time. 
And we are standing at a time when all we are asked to do is to participate as our citizens in our duty to vote, to register if we haven't registered, to ask for a ballot in advance, to get our ballot in early if we wish to mail it in, or to go to the polls and vote. To be part of that movement of social justice, part of that movement of reform, part of that vision that Harriet Tubman and so many look towards in terms of justice in our land. We as Christians are called to that call of justice. And we see what the psalmist says as he talks about the oppression of individuals at th that time, but ends with words of promise and of hope for all of us. Our help is the Lord, creator of earth and sky. Amen.